Okay, this this question has several parts, and, and what it is is they gave us the equation of a circle, we have a circle, and then they gave us a point on the circle, 5, negative 12. And part A says find the slope, find the slope of the line joining this point and the origin. So that's pretty easy. We have two points, and, and we're just going to do negative 12 minus 0 over 5 minus 0 which is negative 12 fifths. Not too hard at all. That's, that's the slope of this line. Because we know that the, the circle they tell us is centered at, well, they don't even have to tell us. The circle is centered at the origin because they give us the equation. Okay. Then part B says find the slope, find the slope of the tangent line at point P. So this Here's the tangent line, and you can skip it if, if you're not sure what a tangent line is. You could skip ahead to the tangent line videos. But the tangent line is definitely going to be perpendicular to the slope of the line we just found. Because the slope of the line we just found is, is really the radius. It's the point joining, or, or it was the line joining the uh, point on the circle and the, and the center of the circle. So that's the radius. And this tangent line is perpendicular. And hopefully you remember that perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals. So the slope of that line is going to be 5 over negative, or sorry, 5 over 12, positive 5 over 12. Okay, so let me, let me get rid of that stuff for a second. So part B, the slope of the tangent line is 5 over 12. Okay, in part C, they kind of throw us a little bit of a curveball, and they say, okay, let Q be another point, and, and the point is going to be just called X, Y, so they're keeping things very general. And they want the slope of the line connecting Q to P as a formula or a function, and they want it all in terms of X. So let's, let's work through that. So question C. The slope of the line joining them, well, if we have this point Y and 12, we can just say Y minus negative 12 over X minus 5. That is the slope of the line joining them. But they said in terms of x. So that means this y has got to go. We have to find y in terms of x. And we can do that because they gave us an equation of the circle up here. So let's solve that for y. So y is going to be equal to, and I'm going to solve this part relatively quickly, but it's just going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 169 minus x squared. That's what y is equal to. And now the big question is, is do we take the plus or do we take the minus? So let me actually, because that's important, let me make it clear. This is y equals plus or minus. Well, what we, 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 we end up, we take the, the minus. Why? Because we know y is in the fourth quadrant, which means we know y has to be negative. So if y is negative, then we need the negative of the square root, because the square root is always going to return either a 0 or a positive. So we know we need the negative one. Okay, so now we're just going to plug the negative square root in for what we have for y. So part d, this will be equal to the negative square root, 169 minus x squared. And then minus negative 12 is really just like plus 12. And that's all over x minus 5. Oh, so this shouldn't be part d. This is, this is still question C. It's just the second step. Okay, so that is the answer to question C though. We just found uh, a function in terms of x that will give us the slope of the line that connects those two points. Okay, now what they want to know in question D, and this is really the, the interesting question, question D, they want to know what's the limit as x approaches 5 of what you just found. So if we look at this limit, we would have we would have a 0 in the denominator and 169 minus what would be 5 squared, which is 25, is 144. And the square root of 144 is 12, so you'd have negative 12 plus 12, which is 0. So if you took that limit, it would come out to be 0 over 0. So hopefully by now you realize that we have to do more work. And what we could we do to this limit? I guess I'll, I'll rewrite it. Actually, you know what? Let me just... Let me just grab this, grab this one and pull it down. Okay, how do we solve this limit? Well, if you watch the rationalization video or you just know what to do, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. 
and I like to, I'd like to think of this as being reordered. It's, it's really 12 minus that. So I'm just going to, because we have addition here, I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to do 12. We had 12 minus it, so I'm going to do 12 plus uh, 169 minus x squared. You don't have to reorder it like I did. I just prefer to see it that way. And then this is going to be 12 plus, same thing, 169 minus x squared. Okay, let me give myself some room. So we'll come back to this picture and see what's really going on. But let's let's just think about why they might ask us to take this limit. The the limit as x approaches 5 means that this point is moving closer and closer and closer and closer to 5. We're getting closer and closer and closer to 5, right? That's what that's what the limit as x approaches 5 is really saying. And in in fact, you could take x to be over here and it would it would still come in and approach 5. Okay. So, just 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 to keep that in mind. And, and what what we're taking the limit of the slope of this line. So what would the slope be? You know, if as x is approaching 5, what's the slope approaching? You know, here's the slope there. We could draw a point closer and find out that slope. What is, if we drew this point? What would the slope be between those two lines? Okay. So anyways, just just to get an idea of what this limit is even talking about. Okay, so now 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 let's continue solving it. So we multiplied by the conjugate to rationalize this. Hopefully you you get that and this is going to turn out to be the limit as I don't really like doing work in that color. So this will be the limit as x approaches 5 of and then the 12s are going to square 144 and then it will be minus cuz Hopefully you remember the difference of squares and rationalization. Hopefully this order doesn't confuse you. If it does, just rewrite it as 12 minus the square root. And then and then do times 12 plus the square root. But anyways, so it's going to be minus, minus 169 minus x squared. All over x minus 5 times 12 plus square root of 169 minus x squared. Okay. And so let's let's simplify a little bit. 169 minus or 144 minus 169. This will be equal to the limit as x approaches 5 of negative 25 plus x squared. So it's 144 minus 169. That's negative 25. And then we have the minus sign distributes to the x squared, which makes it positive. The negative x squared. So let's let me rewrite that as x squared minus 25. So this will the numerator simplifies to x squared minus 25, and the denominator will just leave the same x minus 5 times by 12 plus the square root of 169 minus x squared. Okay, this numerator can be can be simplified. I want to use a different color again. I'm already getting sick of blue. Let me use let me go back to green. So the limit as x approaches 5 x squared minus 5, that can be factored to x minus 5 times x plus 5. And I think you saw that coming. All over x minus 5 times this square root business, 12 plus the square root of 169 minus x squared. Okay, these two divide to 1, and we're ready to plug in 5 for our x's. So let's do that. So this limit will be equal to 5 plus 5, which is 10 divided by 12 plus the square root of 169 minus 25 which is equal to 10 over 12 plus the square root of 144 which is equal to 10 over 12 plus 12 which is equal to 10 over 24 oops 24 and that can be simplified to 5 over 12 and in the very last question e they say compare this Compare this the, this, the answer for part D, 5 over 12, to your answer for part B. And part B, remember, was the slope of the tangent line. And it turns out that, that this part B, the answer was 5 over 12. So this limit gave us the slope of the tangent line. And, and that's why I was trying to point out, if this point is moving closer, you could see that the slope of the line connecting the two points is, is getting closer and closer to the slope of, of the tangent line. And hopefully you can you can draw a circle if you have a paint program for yourself and and just play around with it and see if you can get, make that make sense for you. Okay, see you in the next video.